Yo, what is up? I'm FUTC and six months ago I bought the cheapest red camera I could find on the internet. Normal kids dreamed about being a famous football player and owning a Ferrari. I dreamed about owning a red digital cinema camera. Yeah, I was a weird kid. <laughs> but anyways, I've owned it for a couple of months now and shot a few little projects with it. In this video, I'll of course talk about the camera, compare my expectations versus reality, talk about the financials, and my final verdict on whether or not it makes sense to buy an older red camera nowadays. I'm not really gonna talk about why I bought it, because to be honest, I just bought it because I really, really wanted to, and I'm afraid of people judging me for that. I don't work in big productions or on feature films or anything where this level of cinema camera would be justified. I'm just a big nerd who likes to film stuff for fun. One thing. I I want to preface, I'm not an expert about red cameras, cinema cameras in general, or managing my money like a grown-up. I kinda jumped into the deep end buying this camera and I just want to share about that learning experience and discuss the potential benefits or pitfalls when buying an older RED camera. So first off, this is the RED Epic X with the Mysterium X sensor. It's part of the DSMC1 cameras. All RED cameras are segmented into three generations, DSMC1, DSMC2 and the newest being DSMC3. That makes this one of the first RED cameras apart from the RED 1. But don't let the age fool you. The sensor delivers 5K resolution. You might think 5K isn't really a big deal because your phone or your mirrorless camera can shoot 4K. And 5K is just 1K more than 4K, right? Well, the 4K I get out of my modern Sony a7 IV is a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Shooting 5K on the Red Epic using the full sensor is 5120 by 2700, giving you 66% more pixels to work with, which actually is a big difference. But where Red was really able to differentiate from the competition was the possible frame rates, allowing for 96 FPS in the full 5K resolution for 120 FPS in 5K widescreen, so just chopping some vertical real estate off, and going as high as 300 FPS when dropping down to 2K resolution. Oh yeah, and it does all of that in 16-bit RAW. Those specs are absolutely insane, even by today's standards, and especially when you realize that this camera was released in 2011. To illustrate how far technology has come since then, this is one of the best rated phones of 2011. And back then, 1080p plasma TVs were high-end. When was the last time you heard anybody brag about a plasma TV? That just puts into perspective how crazy 5K raw video at high frame rates was back then. I kind of feel like Red was ahead of the times. Imagine how frustrating it must have been to film in 5K, but knowing that when you publish, people will probably watch it on a crappy 720p TV. But let's talk about that Mysterium X sensor some more. It's a Super 35 sensor with a full frame equivalent crop of 
of 1.3, so a typical full frame 35mm lens would be roughly a 45mm field of view on the MX sensor. Additionally, when shooting at lower resolutions, the camera always crops in. I just talked about those high frame rates, up to 300 FPS in 2K. Well, that comes with the caveat that you are then using a way smaller section of the sensor. And thus, when shooting at 2K, to get those 300 FPS, you get a crop factor of 3.25, quickly turning your 35mm lens into a 114mm field of view. This is, to my knowledge, still the case with modern RED cameras, and the reason why in a lot of situations it doesn't make much sense to buy an 8K Monstro, even if you have the money, because if you just want to shoot something at 4K or 5K to extend recording times or you don't need the maximum resolution because you're just gonna publish on TikTok anyways, you're always cropping in and using a smaller part of the sensor. Okay, enough numbers. Let's talk about something tangible. The dopamine hit of buying something very cool. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about the body of the camera itself, also called the brain. This is a metal behemoth compared to the cameras I usually use. It really has more resemblance with an anvil than with a camera. You can buy a red epic brain for about 1500 bucks, which is basically free in the context of cinema cameras because this costs like 25 grand new. But the brain alone is completely useless. One of the biggest things you need to consider when buying a RED is all of the additional stuff you need to make it actually usable. But first, for the first time ever on this channel, I actually have a sponsor, which makes me more than happy. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has a huge variety of courses for basically anything you would want to learn, from photography, design, video editing, to creating an Etsy store, running a business, and they even have courses for cooking. All of the classes are led by industry professionals who live and breathe these topics, and they have active communities that can help you if you have any questions. When I first joined Skillshare, I just started bookmarking courses like wild because there are so many courses on super interesting topics. The first course I started is about Notion for YouTube creators. This instantly piqued my interest because while I feel like I've gotten quite good at making these videos, my organization was still on the same level from when I made my first video. <laughs> the best thing about Skillshare is that these courses are actual deep dives with a ton of information on niche subjects. Whether you want to pick up a new hobby, start a new business and want the insights from a seasoned veteran, or you want to increase the reach of your existing business through effective marketing, there is a plethora of courses on Skillshare that can help you. If you want to give it a try, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And seriously, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Man, it feels very good to thank a sponsor for the first time. Okay, now let's talk about everything you need to make a DSMC-1 camera actually usable. To control the camera you have three options. Either you use one of the native red touch monitors, the side handle or the red mode. There is a fourth option using Jedi mind tricks to change the frame rate but that only works every once in a while. I have the 7 inch red touch monitor here. It allows you to change all of the settings by just tapping the screen and is connected by this single cable. The problem is these native red monitors aren't that good specs wise and feature wise but they are very expensive. The one I have here will run you about 800 bucks used and using this monitor requires one of these stupid cables. Not only are these really expensive, their favorite pastime is to just break on you. In my opinion, it makes the most sense to just use a modern monitor. There is an HDMI port on the back, so you can easily use an HDMI monitor of your choice, and for controlling the camera, you can use the side handle. This gives you a good grip on the camera and is much faster for changing settings compared to the touchscreen. It has a record button, an LCD screen showing your settings, a D-pad and wheel for changing settings and navigating the menus, and it has a bunch of buttons which you can completely customize. You can basically map whatever function you please wherever you want on the side handle. The customizability is super cool. On the back side you can open a door. This is where you can insert a red volt battery. I have a whole bunch of these smaller red volt batteries. The thing is, these are quite old by now and don't really keep the camera running for long. Maybe like 20 minutes per battery. I also have a bunch of chargers for these batteries including this big chunky one that charges for at 
once. Though it has this piece of tape on the top one of the previous owners put there, with German writing saying, warning, there could be electricity on the screws. I have many questions, and since owning this I am quite scared of getting shocked with 220 volts. Those old red volt batteries usually don't hold a charge well anymore and are quite small. Unless you want to be changing batteries like your popping skittles, your best option is using a V-mount battery. For this you also need the adapter module and the V-mount quick plate. According to the manual, the camera can draw a maximum of 12 amps, but I believe this only happens when you have a huge number of accessories connected. Personally, I've never had any issues with using a V-mount battery that has a 6 amp limit, but my rig is also relatively minimal. What you definitely need to keep in mind, this camera eats batteries the way Patrick eats Krabby Patties. This 95 watt hour battery that could probably power my mirrorless camera the entire day can only power the Red Epic for about one and a half hours. A good rule of thumb is that it consumes about one watt hour per minute. So make sure you plan accordingly. Or do it like me and don't plan at all and just see what happens. Can't run out of battery on set if you don't have any clients, am I right? <laughs> Another important point is media. Pretty much your only option is to use these 1.8 inch red mags. You can pick up a 128 gig mag for a bit over 100 bucks. You'll also need one of these cool readers so your computer can eat the video files. Unfortunately, by now all of these red mags are quite old and there is no telling when the SSD in there might fail. The biggest problem is that they are proprietary and red won't allow you to install another SSD when the one in here has failed. I wish red would open these up and allow people to replace place failed SSDs. I don't think it would cost Red any customers of their newer cameras and would continue to allow people like me to learn about these older Red cameras. This camera is in an Heisenberg-esque uncertain state between maximum inconvenience and maximum convenience. On the one side it's big, heavy, loud and hot, but on the other side it's extremely modular. Being able to rig up these cameras is one of the strongest upsides for bigger productions. You can pretty much mount whatever you want to this camera because you have so many options for mounting. You can change everything around and rig it to make it perfectly fit your needs. You can even change the lens mount. I have a Canon EF mount on here, but I also have a PL mount I could use and there's also a Nikon F mount available. These electronic EF mounts have contacts for changing the aperture and for focusing. So you can pretty much use them with any regular Canon lens and control the aperture from the camera. A good thing is also that you can get some pretty nice deals on older Canon lenses. The problem is that these lens mounts are quite expensive. They'll run you about 500 bucks if you buy them individually. But luckily you can also get passive mounts like this PL mount from Wooden Camera for significantly cheaper. When you rig it up with a battery, monitor, side handle and another handle, the weight already becomes a significant factor. Even with a pretty minimal setup like this, you're likely looking at a minimum of 5.5 kg. And that does not include a lens or any audio hardware, which you'll likely need because the Red Epic has no internal microphone. Now the only thing bigger than the camera is your ego while holding it. <laughs> okay, but seriously, the size can be a problem. After just a few hours of shooting with it handheld or carrying it around, you will have back pain. Also traveling with it is a whole different story. It's fine if you just put it in a case and throw that in the back of your car, but I don't think I would want to fly with it, just because that adds a whole different level of complexity to traveling that I personally can't live without. <laughs> this thing is basically a computer with a lens in front, and the cooling for it alone is already crazy. There is a huge heatsink on the inside and fans on the top, and when you turn it on it sounds like this. The fans always go full speed on startup and then slow down. Startup roughly takes 30 seconds, so turning it off between shots can be quite inconvenient. One issue you might face, and I have faced as well, is that the internal CMOS battery of my RED is empty, and so it doesn't keep the date and time anymore. This means all of the files show up as if they were created in 1999, which might be annoying for you, but I like to live my life desperately clinging to the past. Okay, I should change that battery probably, <laughs> and it's also relatively easy to do, but until now I've honestly just been too lazy. As a solo shooter like me, a camera like this doesn't make that much sense. 
Things you don't normally think about with other cameras can suddenly prove quite difficult. For example, when filming handheld, using one hand to pull focus can already be challenging due to the weight and size. I often end up just resting the back of the camera against my belly so I can use my left hand to focus, which gives me a super healthy 90 degree neck angle. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely a challenge as a solo filmer. And listing all of the stuff I've just talked about should probably make me second guess my life choices. <laughs> After a shoot with this camera, my knees are weak, arms heavy, mom spaghetti. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but seriously, after pretty much every one of the shoots I've done with this camera, I just think about how unpractical it was. But when I get home and start working with the footage, I just think, worth it. Every single time. Because the footage out of this camera just looks insanely good. And the 16-bit RAW files are an absolute dream to work with. With the red code raw footage out of this camera, you can change your white balance and ISO in post. And it doesn't matter what color profile you shoot in, in post you can just decide, do I want this in red color or do I want this in log? The amount of flexibility is crazy and takes out a lot of the stress while you're out filming because you know you have a lot of control after the fact. The 16-bit footage also allows for so much control when color grading. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't know what I'm doing when I color grade. <laughs> I'm coming from photography and Lightroom is my bread and butter, color grading video, not so much. Despite that, everything that comes out of this camera looks so damn good. I've never really been a believer in the whole sensor magic thing. When people say, oh yeah, the CCD sensor and the blah 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 has such amazing colors, I always think, yeah bro, maybe you should lay off the wine. <laughs> but the Mysterium X sensor changed my mind on that. It produces such a nice and soft look with a really pleasant highlight fall off. And it's miles away from the sharp digital look I get out of modern mirrorless cameras. And I can't really describe it, but the colors and the skin tones, it all just works so well. Okay, now let's talk about the financials. The thing that made this whole idea even possible without me going into crippling debt. At the point when I bought it, it was the cheapest red camera on the internet with an asterisk. First, because you can get the red one, the very first camera red ever made, for a bit cheaper, but that was released in 2007 and in my opinion it makes a lot of sense to just spend a little bit more and get the red epic that has a lot of benefits compared to the red one. Secondly, because I wanted to buy one here in Germany and not deal with importing one from abroad. Additionally, I didn't buy the camera and accessories separately, I bought the cheapest set I could find with a bunch of stuff included. The whole case weighed 20 6 kilo when it was shipped to me. Of course, you could go to MPB, buy a red epic brain for 1300 euro and start buying all of the accessories I've mentioned before individually and you'll even have a warranty when buying from them so that's definitely not a bad option. I went the other route as I said and bought a huge bundle from eBay for 3400 bucks, including the body which had relatively low hours. I then sold a few things from that bundle including the touch monitor for a total of about 1000 euro. So I spent about 2400 euro in the end. I already had an HDMI monitor, it cost me about 200 bucks a couple of years ago and I bought two V-mount batteries for another 200 or so. The benefit of buying a bundle is that you might save some money on the accessories and don't have to shell out 500 bucks for buying the EF mount individually. But as with everything in photo or video, I then of course fell into the rabbit hole even more. I bought V-mount batteries, lenses, a beefier tripod that can carry the red, accessories for rigging, but you can get a functioning red epic cinema camera kit for probably around 2500 bucks if you find a good deal on a kit. That kind of makes these older red cameras overlooked price to performance beasts. But if you buy one, you'll have to be aware of the challenges that come with using a camera like this. And that's why it's so hard for me to give you a definitive verdict on this camera. Because it's super impractical, heavy, big, you need so much stuff just to get it running. And a lot of the parts are aging, only available on the used market and frankly might fail. But still, it's a world-class cinema camera and blows everything else in this price segment out of the water. This camera is not only less expensive than a Sony FX3, but it would also poop in the FX3's mailbox just to flex on it. This thing is just in an entirely different league than any other camera you could get for under 3000 bucks. You get beautiful 5K high frame rate footage in 16 bit RAW. They shot films like The Hobbit on this camera for crying out loud. Despite all of the challenges, it's my 
absolute favorite camera I have ever owned. I'm just blown away by how good the footage turns out every single time and I can't wait to shoot more projects with it. Was it rational for me to buy this? No. I'm just some idiot on YouTube who likes to talk about cameras and film stuff for fun. But I don't know what to tell you. Life's short. Buy a cinema camera.